This is Christopher Daniels. Like, subscribe, subscribe to TNW Wrestling on YouTube, subscribe to my other channel, Word of Chris, and subscribe to this channel, Chris Daniels, and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and I'll be down there in the description box. And I'm here to do my AEW Dynamite March 9th, 2022 review. So here we go, discussing about AEW Dynamite, and we're gonna be talking about the first segment, which was pretty damn good. So what happened was we seen Chris Jericho. He comes out and he starts talking about um, how Eddie Kingston beat him at Revolution a few days ago, and uh, how he did how after the match how he didn't shake Eddie Kingston's hand and all that. So he was calling Eddie Kingston out to come out to the ring uh, to shake his hand, and then Eddie Kingston comes out. Eddie Kingston was cutting a pretty good promo about it and everything. Um, you know, he was talking about, like, how after the match uh, between him and Jericho, how he went to his hotel room and cried because that was one of the best matches that he had and uh, how he actually won a match because he said uh, how he had every single match, like, every single big match, like, against John Moxley, Miro, Brian Danielson, CM Punk, and all of them, how he lost all those big matches and he finally won a big match, and that was against Chris Jericho. So, yeah, that's what Eddie Kingston was saying. And there was some funny parts where, uh, you know, the fans was chatting what and all that. And Eddie Kingston looked at the fans. He said, uh, give me some damn respect. Um, you know, I like my boy Steve Austin, but he ain't here. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what uh, Eddie Kingston was saying, which was pretty funny right there. But, yeah, um, then uh, Chris Jericho, you know, looking at Kingston, he goes like, I do respect you. And I want you to shake my hand. And then he finally shook hands. But then all of a sudden we seen Daniel Garcia and 2.0 come out. And it looked like they was coming out to attack Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho. They get in the ring. Starts attacking Eddie Kingston. Threw down Jericho and stuff. And Jericho was like hurting from the bad neck and everything. And he was beating down on uh, you know, Eddie Kingston. But then Santana and Ortiz came down. Uh, to save Kingston Jericho, and they was fighting off uh, 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. They had a baseball bat and everything. And as soon as they was about to, uh, you know, uh, they had uh, Daniel Garcia in the middle of the ring, about to beat him with the baseball bat, and Jericho grabs the baseball bat, and, you know, he wants to beat Garcia with the, uh, with the bat. And, uh, you know, when he was about to do that, all of a sudden he just hits Santana right in the face, with the baseball bat, and then beats Ortiz with it as well, he started attacking both of them, he turned his back on them, so yeah, he started beating them down and everything, but then Jake Hager comes out, and he looks at Jericho, he goes like, what the hell are you doing, why are you breaking up in her circle, and then all of a sudden, we see Jake Hager start attacking uh, Santana and Ortiz, and he's beating them down and everything, and then uh, 2.0 was holding Kingston, while he while Kingston was still on his knees, they was holding his arms and everything. And Kingston, you could tell how pissed off he was in the face and everything. And then Jericho comes up and hits him in the face with a baseball bat. And then um, after they done laid out uh, Santana and Ortiz uh, in the ring, they uh, two point and stuff uh, grabbed the uh, a table and Jake Hager from the ring apron, which almost didn't look. It looked like it was going to be dangerous because uh, Jake Hager couldn't get uh, Eddie Kingston fully up, which was terrifying pretty much. And they was on the ring apron, but then he managed to get him up and everything. And he set him up. It was still a bad landing. Uh, and he uh, power bombed him off the ring apron through a table on the outside of the floor, uh, laying him out. And we seen, you know, Daniel Garcia lock on the sharpshooter onto Ortiz. And uh, Santana pretty much getting dropped with the lift up DDT from 2.0 and stuff. So yeah, and then uh, Jericho grabs the mic and he goes like, "This is the uh, the the uh, Jericho Appreciation Society." So yeah, that is the group's name now: Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, uh, Daniel Garcia, and 2.0. That's their group's name now. And Inner Circle is no more. Uh, Jericho and them laid out Santana and Ortiz and Eddie Kingston tonight. Uh, that's what happened. 
pretty good segment. I liked it and all that. It was a pretty good one. But yeah, Inner Circle is no more. And now we got the Jericho Appreciation Society. That's going to be a long name, so I'm going to probably cut that down to uh, J-A-S. <laughs> so yeah, J-A-S. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> um, because it's a long name. But yeah, it was a pretty good segment, like I said. Uh, great and stuff. And Jericho is like a fully a uh, heel now at this point. So yeah, it was pretty cool stuff. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of good matches tonight on Dynamite as well. Like up next, we'll see um, Adam Page defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Dante Martin. Up next on Dynamite, that looks like that'll be the first match of the night. And still to come later on tonight, we'll see Sammy Guevara defending the TNT Championship against Scorpio Sky later on tonight as well. So yeah. I'll see you guys later until the next thing that happens on AEW Dynamite. See you guys later until then. So the next thing that happened on AEW Dynamite, it was the first match of the night, and it was for the World Heavyweight Championship. It was the AEW World Heavyweight Champion, Hangman Adam Page versus Dante Martin for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. And like I said, it is the first match of the night, and it was a pretty good match. It was a pretty good match between those two. Uh, those two was going pretty good. You know, Dante Martin using his high flying and all that. Uh, you know, Jago for the skies and all that. But at the very ending of this match, we've seen Dante, you know, uh, he jumps on the top rope. And uh, Adam Page is already on the apron. He pushes him off the top rope back into the ring. But Dante lands like, uh, he kind of, like, lands on it and then does, like, the little backflip off the mat and stuff. And, uh, then he comes back around and then he gets hit with a buckshot lariat by Adam Page. And it turned him inside out and they pinned him for the three count. So, yeah, uh, Adam Page defeated Dante Martin for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship tonight. And it was a pretty good matchup. Yeah, yeah, go check it out. I'll give that match, um, two and a half stars. That's why I'll give it. It was a pretty good match. It didn't went super long or anything, but it was a good one. And it's because Dante Martin is, uh, the reason why I got this match is because he's the number two contender, um, uh, on the roster. So, yeah, that's why he gets the, uh, world, world title match tonight. But then, of course, um, as I imagine that Tony Schiavone comes in and he's, uh, interviewing Adam Page. And, uh, Adam Page was talking about, he looks at Dante, he goes, he say, Dante, bring your ass back in here. Dante gets in the ring, they shake hands and everything, and Dante leaves out. And uh, Adam Page was talking about how he went through Adam Cole and stuff at Revolution. And then all of a sudden, a Adam Cole comes out, and then he was uh, telling Adam Page he challenges him next week uh, in his six-man tag team match. It'll be him and two other guys. Um... Uh, that knows Adam Page very well and take him on with uh any two people that Adam Page chooses. So yeah. Uh that will be the match next week on uh Dynamite. Um but yep, that's what's gonna be happening and Adam pa and Adam Cole said he ain't gonna stop going up to the World Heavyweight Championship until he gets taught until he hears his name um with world title. So yeah. And so he hears uh, the new AEW world champion, Adam Cole. So, yeah, that's what Adam Cole said. Pretty good promo from Cole. But, yep, uh, that's what happened. But uh, up next, we're going to see Brian Danielson and John Moxley working as a team for the first ever time. And they'll have uh, William Regal at ringside. And they'll be taking on this other tag team called the uh, War Course uh, up next on Dynamite. So, yeah. Uh, that's what's going to be happening. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later until then. So, the next thing that happened on Dynamite, it was a tag team match. It was Brian Danielson and John Moxley with William Regal at ringside versus uh, the Wark Horsemen. And uh, that team consists of J.D. Drake, which we actually seen on Rampage when he faced off against Keith Lee uh, when it aired uh, last Friday. And uh, his tag team partner was Anthony Henry. And these two guys apparently used to, uh, was on Ring of Honor and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is the first time that we see them as a tag team on Dynamite. Like I said, we already seen J.D. Drake 
which was on Rampage last week. And this is the first time we're going to be seeing An Anthony Henry uh, on AEW. So, yeah, it was a it was an okay tag team match. Um, you know, of course, we kind of figured that uh, Brian and Moxley was going to win this match. Uh, but at the very ending of this match, we've seen Moxley, you know, hitting a suicide dive onto uh, Anthony Henry outside the ring. And then he hit the paradigm ship onto uh, him outside the ring. And then we've seen uh, Daniel Br uh, whoops, <laughs> Brian Danielson. Um, he hits the running knee onto J.D. Drake. And then, um, you know, he starts stomping on his face while he's holding his arms. And then he locks on the LaBelle lock. Um, and they made him tap out. So, yeah, uh, Brian Danielson and John Moxley defeated the War Horsemen tonight in a tag team match. Like I said, it was an okay tag team match. Well, it was pretty good with uh, the teams and everything. But, yeah. Um, but for that match, I'll give it one and a half stars. That's why I'll give it. It was a pretty good match, though. A uh, pretty good uh, tag team debut with uh, Moxley and Br and Danielson. Uh, so yeah, and uh, Tony Schiavone was in the ring interviewing uh, them and Willie Regal. You know he was talking on the mic, talking about he was that glad they finally got to talk to Tony Schiavone after like thirty years or whatever or twenty years. Um, but yeah, uh, you know Regal was talking about he met uh, Brian Danielson of. Uh, uh, over 20 years ago, uh, how they was talking about wrestling a lot. Every time when Danielson's name got brought up, Regal's name got brought up. And he was talking about, like, how one time uh, Brian Danielson actually mentioned his name on Dynamite. And a friend told William Regal that. And Regal became interested. And that's why he appeared at Revolution, where he said he was watching uh, Moxley and Danielson fight and everything. And, um... You know, he's seen enough of it, and that's why he uh, came out to the ring. And then, he's, of course, he was talking about Moxley after they met, because they met, apparently, like, about 11 years ago. And he was talking a lot of stuff about Moxley as well, and talk about his team. Uh, if any team wants to step up, um, you better be careful. It's either you step up or you get stepped on. So, yeah, that's what Rico said. But yeah, like I said, it was an okay match in the promo with uh, William Regal at the ending. It was pretty good as well. Uh, for the match, like I said, I'll give it one and a half stars. It was a good match, though. Um, but up next, we're going to see Pac versus Wheeler Utah up next on Dynamite. So yeah, I will see you guys later until the next thing that happens on AEW Dynamite. So the next thing that happened on Dynamite, it was a one-on-one -on -one match. It was Pac versus Wheeler Utah. But before I talk about that tag team, uh, before I talk about that match, I meant, uh, we gotta talk about Adam Page and the Dark Order. Now, the Dark Order was talking backstage, and, you know, Adam Page comes up, and the Dark Order was like, well, who are you gonna choose? Are you gonna choose one of us or one of us, uh, to be your tag team partner, uh, you know, for next week's match? And Adam Page was like how he, he told them that he ran into, uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, and they asked to be the tag team partner because they want to go after the Young Bucks. Uh, and, um, you know, um, he said it felt awkward and he said yes. And that's what happened. So, yep, uh, that's what happened. Uh, so, we'll see Jungle Boy and uh, Luchasaurus become Adam Page's uh, tag team partner for next week's match. But then we get to the match, Pac versus Willie Utah. Willie Utah have best friends and Dan Housen and all of them with them. Everything side now. Orange Cassidy is injured from the shoulder because of injury that he sustained at uh, Revolution. Uh, apparently, luckily that uh, he would not have to have surgery on his shoulder, so that's one good thing. But he will be out for a little bit, so yeah. Um, we don't get the time frame for that. Uh, but yeah, and then we see Penta Alex at ringside for uh, Pac, and it was a pretty good match. But at the ending of this match, we seen Pac. Hitting a superplex onto Willie Utah. Um, you know, off the top turnbuckle. And then he locked on the brutalizer onto Willie Utah. And it made him tap out. So, yeah. Uh, Pac defeated Willie Utah tonight on Dynamite. That's what happened. It was a pretty good match. I'll give that match one and a half stars. Good match between uh, Pac and Willie Utah. Um, but, yep. Uh, that's what happened. And then after the match, uh, we seen Adam Cole... Uh, Red Dragon and the, the Young Bucks talking backstage. 
and the young bucks was telling adam cole how they did not how they did not want to go into a tag team match against adam page and adam cole was like well i was like i wasn't even going to choose you anyways i was going to choose red dragon so yeah next week it will be adam cole and red dragon versus uh adam page jungle boy and luchasaurus in the six-man tag team match but yep that's what i mean in that uh match next week so yeah I'll see you guys later until the next thing that happens on Dynamite. So the next thing that happened on AEW Dynamite, uh, before I talk about the segment with uh, Matt Hardy and them, uh, we got to talk about FTR now. We've seen uh, FTR pretty much talking backstage. Um, you know, they got uh, totally Blanchard with them. And uh, what happened was, you know, Dax was talking about his family and all that, and then Tully Blanchard cut him off and talked about, like, remember, you only came here for championships and stuff, and and to win and all that, and Dax was talking about, but my family, he goes, like, I understand about your family, but I got a family too, but like I said, number one is the championships, and that's what he was saying, and then Dax, you know, grabbed Tully by the jacket and all that, and Cash broke him up or whatever, and then Cash looks at him. He goes like, "You know what, Tully, you're fired." So yeah, Tully Blanchard now fired. Uh, so yeah, it looks like FTR and Tully Blanchard broke up now. So yeah, that's what happened. And then we get to another segment with somebody else getting fired. So we have Matt Hardy, Private Party, everybody from AHFO. Uh, so yeah, Matt Hardy was talking about how he got this company inside of AEW and all that, talking about it. And he was talking about every time when he throws on a suit, he's a completely different person. He's an asshole and all that. And, you know, he's not wearing a suit right now, so he's not an asshole. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's what Matt Hardy was saying. And uh, Matt Hardy was telling uh, everybody, uh, apparently they want him out of AHFO. But he knows his boy's private party ain't going to take him out. And he said, thumbs up, I stay in. Thumbs down, I get out. So, yeah. Uh, it's just a vote to see if Matt Hardy will stay in or out of AHFO. And, you know, Andrade threw the thumbs down. And same for Jose. And uh, we've seen Private Party they threw the thumbs up. And then behind Matt Hardy's back, they threw the thumbs down. And then they start attacking Matt Hardy. So, yeah, Matt Hardy was getting beat up by Andrade, Jose, Private Party, and Butcher and Blade. So he was getting laid out and stuff. And then all of a sudden Darby Allen and Sting come down to the rescue. So yeah, they come down. And of course, it's, you know, it's six other guys. And the numbers game caught up. And then they start getting beat down and stuff. But then we heard a familiar theme song hit. And you know what? It's Jeff Hardy. It says, uh, it's the Hardy Boys theme song. It hits. He comes down to the ring. He makes a save. So yeah, he finally debuts in AEW now. His 90 days uh, no compete clause with WWE ended a few days ago. But yeah, uh, it is great to see Jeff Hardy back in the ring. Um, but yep, he has finally debuted in AEW. He comes down, saves Matt Hardy and them, uh, starts helping out and everything. And then we see Matt Hardy hit the twist of fate onto uh, the blade. And then Jeff Hardy takes the shirt off, climbs the top turnbuckle, and then hits the swanton bomb. And, yep, the Hardy Boys is now reunited. And uh, then we see Darby Allen and Sting staring the Hardys straight down. So, yeah, maybe we'll see Sting and Darby Allen versus the Hardys very soon. But, yep, uh, it was great to see Jeff Hardy make his AEW debut, uh, like I said. But, yeah, um, so we've seen Tully Blanchard get fired. We've seen Matt Hardy pretty much get fired out of his own group. And then we see Jeff Hardy debut. Great stuff. Um, but yep, uh, that's what happened there. And then we seen Tony Schiavone actually interviewing uh, Shane Strickland, Shane Swerve Strickland, uh, which ma he made his debut uh, this past Sunday at Revolution. And they was talking about how he's going to be in the match on Rampage and all that, make his in-ring debut. And uh, Tony Nese comes up. He goes like, you know what? We got a bunch of history. How about I'll be your first opponent? And now that match is now made up. So yeah. On Rampage, we'll see Shane Strickland versus Tony Nese on Rampage. So, yep, that's what's going to be happening. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later until the next thing that happens on AEW Dynamite. 
So the next thing that happened on AEW Dynamite, we have Wardlow come down to the ring. And, you know, Tony Schiavone was holding the mic for him and all that. Interviewing him and asking him, like, why you done that MJF on, uh, you know, this past Sunday at Revolution. And he was explaining his actions. Talking about, like, he spent two years a new contract with MJF. And, uh, you know, he was explaining, like, why he was underneath contract. Like, uh, he was explaining, like, uh, he was talking about how his family was poor, how he grew up poor with his mother and his two older sisters, and how he wanted to become a wrestler and, you know, you know, live his dream and all that and pretty much provide a better life for his mother and his future family and all that. So, yeah, that's what Wardlow was saying. So that's why he got a new contract with MJF. And even though he said he knew that MJF was a douchebag to begin with. And, uh, he said, um, you know, he was talking about, like, that's why he, uh, pretty much passed over the diamond ring to, uh, CM Punk at Revolution. And how he wants to be released from his contract with MJF. That's what he says. So he's pretty much saying he's quitting, uh, with, M uh, with, uh, MJF. But yeah, that's what Warlow said, and then, uh, he said, uh, MJF, if you're smart, uh, release me from the contract, and we'll go our separate ways, I won't do nothing to you, I will not hit no power bombs on you or nothing, even though I really want to, I will not do that, and we'll go our separate ways and all that, because karma will bite you in the ass very soon. So yeah, that's what Warlow said, and then he walked away, but yeah, that's what happened. But up next, we're going to see the Acclaim versus uh, Jurassic Express up next on Dynamite for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later until then. So, the next thing that happened on AEW Dynamite, it was a tag team match. It was the AEW World Tag Team Champions, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus with Christian Cage at ringside versus uh, Anthony Bowens and Max Caster. The acclaim for the AEW World Tag Team Championships in the tag team match. And it was a pretty good match at the ending of this match. It looked like the acclaim almost won the tag titles. But then Anthony Bowens at one point distracting the referee. He was still the legal man in this match. And then uh, Max Caster tried to come into the ring with the chain wrapped around his face. Try to hit Jungle Boy while the referee's distracted. And then Christian pulled uh, Max Caster out of the ring. And then uh, Luchasaurus laid. Max Caster out after that, and then, uh, you know, uh, they ran Anthony Bowens into the tur turnbuckle, they tagged each other in, and uh, then we've seen Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy pretty much in, like, a new version of the uh, Doomsday device onto Anthony Bowens, where Luchasaurus grabs Jungle Boy by the hand so he can have balance and stuff. Uh, when he climbs up to the ropes and jumps off the top rope with the doomsday device. So yeah, that's what they hit on Anthony Bones and then got the three count. So yeah, uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus defeated the Acclaim tonight and has retained the AEW World Tag Team Championships. That's what happened. Pretty good match. I'll give that match two stars. That's why I'll give it a pretty good match between the two teams. But yeah, still to come later on tonight in the main event, we'll see Sammy Guevara defending the TNT Championship against Scorpio Sky later on tonight. But next, we're going to see Thunder Rosa versus Layla Hirsch up next on Dynamite. So, yeah, I'll uh, we'll see you guys later until the next thing that happens on Dynamite. So, the next thing that happened on Dynamite, we've seen, before I talk about the women's match, we've seen Keith Lee getting interrupted by QT Marshall and stuff. So, they was talking, and now they got a match at Rampage. So, yeah, that match will be happening at Rampage. But then we get to the match, Thunder Rosa versus Layla Hirsch, one-on-one. -on -one. And it was a pretty good match, but uh, at the very ending of this match, we've seen Layla Hirsch try and grab this exposed turnbuckle thing uh, thing uh, to hit Thunder Rosa with. But uh, Red Velvet comes down to save her, uh, grabbing the turnbuckle thing off her hands and throws Layla Hirsch back into the ring. And then, you know, Layla Hirsch and Thunder Rosa are still going at it a few times Thunder Rosa tried to hit her finish move at one point. Uh, Layla reversed it, locking on the uh, arm bar onto her, and then uh, Thunder Rosa getting the ropes and stuff. But at the ending, we seen Thunder Rosa hit her finish move, that uh, driver, into um, 
Layla Hirsch and then got the three count. So, yeah, Thunder Rosa defeated Layla Hirsch tonight on Dynamite. It was a pretty good match, like I said. If you have yet, go check it out. But, yeah, I'll give that match uh, one and a half stars. But then Tony Schiavone was on the mic, and he starts talking. He said next week on Dynamite, we'll see Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker for the AEW Women's Championship. In a steel cage match. So yeah. That match will be happening in a steel cage. And then we seen Britt Baker. And she was talking. And she was pretty much saying how she's going to beat Thunder Rosa. And retain the women's championship. So yeah. That's what happened. So yeah. Uh, pretty good stuff. And uh, oh yeah. And I forgot to mention Jay Cargo had an interview. And she was pretty much talking about how she would give any woman the kiss of death. Just like how she did at Ty Conti. At Revolution. So yeah. That's what she said. But up next. It'll be the main event. It'll be Sammy Guevara. Versus Scorpio Sky. One on one. For the TNT Championship. So yeah. That match will be up next. So yeah. I'll see you guys later. Until then. So now. We're going to be talking about the main event. On Dynamite. It was a one on one match. It was the TNT Champion. Sammy Guevara. Versus Scorpio Sky. With Ethan Page. And Dan Lambert. At ringside. For the TNT Championship. It was a pretty good match, but like very quickly into this match, like about probably two minutes into this match, we've seen Semi Guevara try to hit the 630 Centon uh, onto uh, Scorpio Sky on a table outside of the ring. Scorpio Sky moved out of the way, and that's when, he, when Semi went through the table and all that. And then while everybody was checking on Ty Conti, ran down, and that's where she was checking on uh, Sammy. And then uh, Sammy refused to go to the back. And he uh, wanted to continue the match. But then he continued the match with Scorpio Sky. And then at one point he hit the GTH onto Sky. Laying him out. And then uh, since Scorpio Sky rolled underneath the bottom rope. He drags him back into the middle. And then he climbed up the top turn rope. Which jumps off for a shooting star press. Scorpio put his uh, knees up. And Sammy landed on it. And then uh, yeah, um, while that happened. Um, we see Dan Lambert on one side of the ring, distracting the referee, while Ethan Page was on the other side, trying to get into the ring, and then Ty Conti pretty much quickly, uh, pulling Ethan Page off the apron, and then that's when Page Van Zant comes up and attacks Ty Conti, running her into the still steps, uh, and then that distracted Sammy Guevara, and then, uh, Scorpio Sky took advantage of that, got, uh, Sammy Guevara, and then lifted him up on his shoulders, and hit the TKO onto him, pinning him for the three count, and then winning the TNT Championship. So yeah, Scorpio Sky defeated Sammy Guevara tonight, and has won the TNT Championship. That's what happened. Pretty good match and all that. But then after the match, uh, Scorpio Sky hit Sammy upside the head with the title, and then Paige Van Zandt uh, laid out uh, Ty Conti, and then threw her on top of uh, Sammy Guevara, and then grabbed the AEW contract. And signed over on Ty Conti's ass. And yep. That's what happened. So yeah. Pretty good match and all that. I'll give that match. I'll get, with everything that happened. With Paige Van Zandt and all that. I'll give it three stars. So yeah. That's what I'll give it. It was pretty good and stuff. It was entertaining. Um, But yeah. um, Pretty good stuff. So yeah. uh, For tonight's AEW Dynamite. um, I'll give a out of ten. I'll give it seven stars. That's what I'll give it. It was a pretty good dynamite still. Um, best segment of the night was easily with Chris Jericho and, and Eddie Kingston and all that. Pretty good stuff right there. Uh, match of the night. I'll probably say this match, the main event with the TNT Championship. Now, the AEW World title match with Dante Martin and Adam Page was pretty good. The World Tag Team title match with the Acclaim and Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus was pretty good as well. Uh, Thunder Rosa versus Layla Hirsch was okay. Uh, Warlow quitting the uh, the Pinnacle was pretty good. And, uh, of course, Jeff Hardy making his AEW debut was awesome as well. But, yeah, uh, Dynamite, it was pretty good. So, yeah, if you have yeah, go check out the show. It was a good show. But, yeah. That has been my AEW Dynamite Mar- uh, March 9th, 2022 reviews. Like, subscribe, subscribe to TNW Wrestling on YouTube. Subscribe to my other channel, World of Chris, and subscribe to this channel, Chris Bales. 
and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and I'll be down there in the description box. And yeah, that's been my AEW Dynamite reviews, and I'll see you guys later for this Friday's uh, Friday Night Smackdown and AEW Rampage reviews this Friday night. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. Until then.